The way of the cross surpasses all human understanding. The way of the cross is the way of humiliation and glory, the way of suffering and joy, the way of sacrifice and victory. During the Cultural Revolution in China, the flame of hatred and bitterness burned hot. At the same time, a quiet stream of love and forgiveness struggled to quench the thirst of the faithful. In 1960, a few families started gatherings which had very few participants. By 1967, these house church gatherings became very widespread. There was only one torn apart Bible that survived the Cultural Revolution within 50 miles of our home. It had the New Testament, but only from Romans chapter 12 to Revelation chapter 11. We wanted to study it, but the owners wouldn't lend it out. It was their treasure. So we had to go over there to copy it. Every week we had to make two or three trips. The first Bible I received was from a sister. Someone from Hong Kong had given it to her. During our meeting, we passed it around so that everyone could touch and feel it for a while. Everybody held it to their cheeks and kissed it. After being kissed by 30 people, the Bible was soaked with tears and the red color became faded. During the Cultural Revolution, Chinese Christians risked their lives to preserve a few Bibles. But toward the end, a lot of hand-copied Bibles became available. And overseas believers began to smuggle Bibles to house churches across the country. It was not until 1985, sponsored by a Western foundation, that Bibles were printed in China in large quantities. With the end of the Cultural Revolution, secret house church activities gradually came out into the open. After the death of Mao Zedong, the Chinese people, cheated by a false god, began to search for the true god. For the first time in their lives, people from the lowest levels of society came face to face with God's unconditional love, with Christ's sacrifice on the cross and with the knowledge that in God's temple they had value and dignity, how could they not rejoice, like everyone who has received the most precious gift in the world? The Chinese have experienced a great deal of sin in this mortal existence, but never have they experienced the peace that comes from forgiveness. And how amazing God's grace is! He loves each and every one of us. I decided to devote my life to His service. 
It's only through the love of God that I can live a better life. It gives me a purpose and a reason to live. Just as the sun cannot stop shining and seeds in spring cannot stop sprouting, these people answered a call from deep in their souls. They were reborn through Jesus. They could not help but dedicate themselves to God and become missionaries of the gospel. Tens of thousands of devout Christians, like Zheng Qinyun, have dedicated their lives to the Lord. From 1981 on, I completely devoted myself to this path. I left my hometown with several other girls and went by bicycle and on foot to more than 10 counties nearby. In every village, we talked to people we met on the street. Many of them were really interested. They never seen a group of girls spreading the gospel. A lot of sick people were healed by the power of our prayers. Every time we traveled, tens of thousands of people became followers of Jesus. This is how we established the house churches. As soon as the government re-established the Three Self Church, house churches became illegal, and it was forbidden to spread the gospel. Everyone who has been jailed for speaking the truth, please stand and come forward. Being thrown in jail is such a common occurrence that these faithful brothers and sisters are quite comfortable talking about their experiences. We shouldn't resent anybody because nothing happened that came from man. God allowed us to suffer this way. Jesus suffered as well, but was not resentful. He prayed for his persecutors. After I was released, I didn't appeal. The policeman said, we're not going to redress your case because you will keep doing the same thing. Of course I will keep doing the same thing. I've been put on this earth to witness for the Lord. What else is important? Didn't the Lord tell me from the beginning to give up everything and carry the cross to follow Him? This is the Lord's way. I'm following Him on the same path. Why should I be upset? Why should I complain? This is my biggest blessing. Epaphras was originally sentenced to life imprisonment, but they released him in 1987. It was very important to him not to leave the Yinchuan jail, so he stayed in a little house nearby. The court cheated me and changed my situation from non-repentant to repentant in order to release me. I protested in two ways. First, I refused to leave the jail. Then after I was released, I chose to live as a life sentence prisoner in a place just outside of the gates. Not only did he live next to the jail, Epaphras insisted on fasting five days a week. If I keep on fasting like this, they will know I have not repented, that I don't accept their accusations in the first place. If I continue to fast like this until I die, it will mean that I refuse repentance, even until death. For many years I have believed in Jesus and followed Him. The Lord Jesus has always listened to my prayers. He has been with me wherever I go. I will never deny Him. Having interviewed hundreds of missionaries, it's still hard to imagine how successful they've been. Without much education or experience, nevertheless they found ways to spread the gospel. Every one of these unexceptional farmers leads tens of thousands of house churches and millions of Chinese Christians. In fact, there is an ever-growing number of house churches secretly scattered in the villages, small alleys, and streets of China. Today in China, there are countless devotees, hundreds of non-governmental seminaries, and thousands of Bible training centers.
these faithful souls know they no longer belong to a corrupt and evil world. They live to shed blood and tears, even risk their lives, for the sole purpose of spreading the love of their Father in Heaven. This is the promise I have made to the Lord. Lord, I will carry your cross and follow you, for it is the duty of your disciples. The hardships I've had are not sufferings, but true blessings from you. I know this is a long journey full of pain and tears, but I'm determined to follow your path faithfully.